Hi there, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're gonna be unboxing and unwrapping this pile of art supplies. My name is Omar, I'm an artist, illustrator, author, and teacher. I help artists improve their skills by sharing my knowledge from filling 40 sketchbooks. I will be testing them out and swatching them later, and then I'm gonna create an abstract mixed media piece with them, so please join me. This is actually two deliveries from Jackson's Art, and also an art shop in Paris. I've been waiting for quite a while to create this unboxing video, so I was quite surprised all over again because I couldn't actually remember what I'd ordered. First off, we have a grey tone paper sketchbook from Strathmore and also a watercolour sketchbook from them as well. Then the Hannah Muller watercolour tone sketchbook and the Beta sketchbook from Stillman and Byrne I will show you some of these sketchbooks in more detail later on in this video. In this little box we have a selection of Liquitex markers. I already have quite a few of these and I find them incredibly useful but I wanted something that was going to be a little bit more neutral for things like backgrounds. If we open up this particular box, we have some coloured pencils by Faber-Castell. These are the polychromos that some people suggested that I might like to try. I wanted to choose a selection that was fairly similar to the range of pencils that I already use. This lot is by Luminance and they're by Karen Dash. I saw that there was a special offer and I just couldn't resist, couldn't help myself because they are my favourites. I will be swatching both of these sets of pencils in a little while, so do hang around for that. Next up, we have some watercolours by Schminke. Again, those special offers just get me every time. When I saw that these were almost half price, I thought, hey, let's give them a whirl. And these particular colours I don't actually have in my current watercolour palette right now, so I was really interested to see these in action. I've been meaning to use the contents of this paper bag since I got back from Paris in March a few months ago. I bought this from the Sennelier store. So we have two eco line markers and three rather gorgeous pan pastels. They look a bit like old school makeup blusher sets, but not green. In a previous art haul video, I did buy a tin of Caran d'Ache Neo colors, but they were a little bit too bright for my personal taste. So I decided to get this tin of 30. I'm really glad to see that it has the colors which are more suited to the type of work that I produce, like these rather muted greens, blues, and ochres and browns. Like many of you, I do have an art supply addiction. I am a naturally curious person and I just wanted to try out so many things and I'm definitely moving towards mixed media. I see so many artists use various products and I just feel like I'm gonna miss out if I don't at least give some of them a try and see what all this fuss is about. <laughs> So let's unwrap this little Stillman and Burn sketchbook. It's 270 GSM and it says it's for mixed media, wet and dry, media, watercolour and ink. Also, it was recommended by quite a lot of people who said it's great for coloured pencils because the paper texture is quite smooth. So that's what I'm going to do on the first page. Let's starting off with the Faber-Castell polychromos. Quite a few people in a recent YouTube video recommended that I should try these out. So let's give this a go. The first one is a lovely dark green. It's quite warm and it's called Oxide Green. The next one is Pine Green, which is a little bit blue and cooler. This is a really nice colour. It's called India Red and it's kind of a baked terracotta. Now we've got Walnut Brown, which is very rich, very nice. And this last one I can't pronounce. It looks like Pompeian Red. Oh, that is lovely. My initial reaction is they are very nice pencils 
and they are cheaper than the Luminance but they don't seem to be quite as deep in hue as the Luminance but I will reserve judgment until I use them properly in actual sketchbook pieces. I want to say at this point I do have a YouTube video where I test out the Luminance colour pencils that I had in my collection before I bought this extra five. I'll link it in the description below. If you are enjoying this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, leave a comment and also subscribe to my channel. If you do that, it means that it will get seen and the algorithm will boost my channel, which would really help me out. Now let's try these luminance. This first one is a dark indigo, which I have actually been meaning to get hold of for quite a long time. Oh, it's very dark gorgeous. Next up we have Natural Russet which is quite similar to that Indian Red from Faber-Castell although it does seem a little bit richer and it goes on smoother. This one here is Payne's Grey 60%. I think it's going to come in really handy for my sketchbook pieces. Next up we have Burnt Ochre 50%. It's kind of a dusky earthy orange I can't wait to use this and lastly we have olive brown which I'm sure is going to come in really handy with landscapes. I've got a little bit of room at the bottom here so let's try out the two eco line markers that we've got. This first one says pastel red and it's kind of a peachy pink colour. That nib is surprisingly wide when you angle it like this and I like how much colour came down. Now let's take a look at sand yellow. There's a tinge of green to it but I really like it and I think this is going to add a lovely pop to my sketches. Now let's move on to the Strathmore Watercolour Sketchbook 400 series. It has 48 pages and it's 300 GSM. Taking a closer look we can see that it's quite textured on one side but less so on the other. Funnily enough, a lot of people say they reserve the first page of a sketchbook for swatches so they don't get overwhelmed by the feel of the blank page when they start a new sketchbook. Let's take a closer look at the Schminky watercolours that I've got. They are Potter's Pink, Cobalt Green and Brilliant Opera Rose. Oh my gosh, that pink is vivid straight out of the tube. Let's see how they look when we add some water. This is the cobalt green and it's a lovely muted green. I would say it is on the cool side, but I can see how it could have plenty of uses for me. Next one is Potter's Pink. I've actually heard Liz Steele talking about this a lot when I did her courses and I've been wanting to try this out for quite some time. It's a lovely muted dusky pink. I can see how this could come in very handy. Oh my goodness, that opera rose is literally luminous. I have never painted anything that bright before. So what I'm going to do now is mix the potter's pink with the opera rose and see what happens. Oh, the result is a lot more muted and it's a lovely kind of raspberry colour. I like it very much. Now let's mix up the potter's pink with some of the cobalt green and see what that creates. Oh, that's interesting. It's sort of a deep grey green colour that could definitely be used in landscapes. And this last one, let's mix opera rose with the cobalt green. Oh, it's kind of a deep dusky lilac purple. I don't know how else to describe it but I do like this colour very much and I'm very impressed with what I've been able to create with these three watercolours. As I've still got space on that page I want to try these chunky Liquitex markers. The top one is called Unbleached Titanium and we also have Parchment and the one at the bottom is Naples Yellow. With these markers you do have to shake them quite hard for some time to get that acrylic paint flowing and what I like to do is to tap it out piece of scrap paper so you don't spoil your sketchbook and it doesn't flood out. This titanium is a lovely warm neutral. I can see many uses for this from stones to faraway mountains. 
And another little tip is I use a little paintbrush to apply some of this acrylic to small areas for details if I need to. This one is parchment and it's definitely cooler. There's a tiny tinge of green in there. I'm definitely glad that I've got some neutrals that work cool and warm. And I do love these chisel tips as it means you can cover quite a large area but if you turn that chisel tip around you can get a medium sized nib and they can create some lovely graphic marks depending on the angle that you hold it. And I think being able to cover such large areas it means you can be less precious about how you apply it. This is the Sea White of Brighton sketchbook which I bought quite a while ago for one of Laura Horne's online courses. I will talk a little bit more about her in a minute. As you can see I've previously filled it with texture experiments and it's very rough with playful pages and I really love creating all these textures and producing some of these limited colour palettes. I want to try out the pan pastels. I have chosen the bright yellow green, turquoise extra dark and yellow ochre. I know other artists use sponges or even cheap makeup brushes but I haven't got any of those on me. I'm just going to test them out using my fingers today. They do feel really lovely and smooth. Wow, a little goes a long way. I'm loving that misty quality at the edges. Also want to see what happens when I stick a little bit of water on it. It seems to diffuse slightly, which is a nice effect. This is the bright yellow green shade. I did wonder about choosing this because it's a bit brighter than the greens that I normally use, but it's going on really nicely. And if I add a little dab of that dark turquoise and blended it in, it is quite beautiful effect. Let's find another clean finger. This is the yellow ochre. It's a really lovely shade. And again, a tiny dab of that turquoise just gives it that dusky appearance. I've got some ideas for these already. Let me know in the comments if you would like me to try these out in a landscape demo. These could be really incredible for landscapes. Now it's time for the Neo Color 2 by Karen Dash. I am not going to be swatching all of them because that would just take too long. So I'm going to go and pick out a few that I'm drawn to. First of all is this sage green actually. It's called olive green. And this lovely dark shade of silvery green. Let's add some water to this patch. Oh, now that's really interesting. I love the way it changes everything by adding that water. This darker colour is actually called umber and I would say it's a cool grey, although it does look much warmer when you add water to it. I was trying to find the pointy end of this salmon neo colour. It looks like it's broken off so I'm just going to use that tiny part. Oh, this is very lovely and it's very subtle when you add the water. I do like the way these neo colours behave and when you add them to areas which are already damp there's a lovely diffusion and it lightens up the hue. Now I'm going to use a selection of these materials that I've just swatched for you including some of the watercolours and coloured pencils, I can't decide at the moment which ones, and also acrylic markers and the pan pastels. At the time of filming I had just started a wonderful mixed media course run by a wonderful artist called Laura Horn, and I'm going to put a link to her course in the description. One of the tasks in the first week was a sketchbook supplies challenge which was to create an abstract piece just so you got to know your art supplies better so I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to test what we've got here in a fun way. The brief was just to let your art supplies inspire you and she wanted us to really mix things up so I think using supplies that I've never really tried out before was going to be a great challenge. I honestly didn't have a plan, I just wanted to see what this combination of materials would look like on a double page. And my hand was just reaching for stuff, I just randomly took the Liquitex marker. All of this is accidental marks, there's no thought behind it. 
I know for some of you this could be quite difficult, especially if you have problems of being uh, loose. And my only tip would be don't even think about whatever material you're reaching for. Just slap it on any old how and see what happens. Now let's try some of that Colbrook Green Schminky. I did want to have quite a limited palette, so I wanted to make this green one of the key colours. Soften some of those edges. I wanted to show you this demo because it's a good opportunity for you to see that even I have to embrace the fact that I will create mediocre art for a while before experiencing breakthroughs and that is a natural part of the learning process that allows you to approach your art with a sense of curiosity and openness. Picking up one of those luminance colour pencils, it's the indigo. It's almost like automatic writing. I'm just holding it at the top of the pencil so I don't have very much control and I'm just letting my hand do whatever. I don't know how to describe it. I think the key is unplanned chaos and from this a thing of beauty will emerge. <laughs> just think of it like that. Using the edge of a pencil can also create some really nice effects. It's not something that I do very often. And um, these luminance pencils are not water soluble. I just wanted to see what happened and nothing happened. <laughs> I have to say, Laura Horn makes it look so easy when she talks through her demos, but she does have years of experience. At this stage, I was thinking, what the heck is going on? This is just a big hot mess now. Saying that, it has freed me somewhat from the pressure of creating a uh, immediate perfect piece. And so it's encouraging me on growth and exploration. Also a lot of patience and perseverance because those artistic breakthroughs are gonna take a lot of time. It's only a temporary phase. Uh, what we're talking about is a growth mindset which is crucial for artistic development. So you're shifting your focus from seeking immediate mastery to valuing the learning experience and all the incremental improvements. This mindset encourages resilience and a willingness to take a few more risks and experiment. And creating mediocre art like this will provide opportunities for a bit more self-reflection because you can identify areas for improvement like the right hand side needs a bit more work. And embracing this phase, you can refine your techniques later on. So you, it's a gradual process. And this crappy phase cannot be avoided. You have to go through it. You can't go around it. You can't go under it. And once you get through to the other side, let's celebrate the little breakthroughs, whether it's a technique or a concept, and they'll become even more meaningful and rewarding. And just sitting through this phase is really part of that journey as you gain a deeper appreciation for the progress that you're making. All of this honestly only took me about nine or 10 minutes, and I really surprised myself. As I said, I don't often create abstract pieces and maybe I could have worked into it a little bit more, especially that right hand page, but I am a beginner with abstract, so I'm gonna give myself a little bit of self-compassion and learnt an incredible amount about these new art materials and how they behave, which was the whole purpose of this warm-up exercise. Ultimately, the journey from creating pretty mediocre art, which is what I've just done, to producing more exceptional artwork is a process that requires time, dedication and a willingness to embrace that imperfection. I know it's really, really tricky to get your head round, but don't be discouraged by early setbacks or unsatisfactory outcomes. Always see the little wins. I love the pops of pink and I love the, the chunky, marks that I made with the acrylic markers. All of these things are valuable steps on your artistic path. So keep creating with the knowledge that each piece is going to contribute to your growth as an artist. I am going to be adding the new Schminky watercolours into 
little pans and put it in my watercolour tin. And trying out new pigments I think allows me to explore a wider range of colour variations and how it might affect my artwork. Different pigments have unique properties. I can discover fresh new combinations which I'm very excited about. And this is also contributing to my growing awareness of what my palette is, what am I drawn to and what is unique to me. You may have noticed that I didn't do anything with these two tonal sketchbooks. I promise there is going to be a follow-up video where I'm going to show you some of my recent toned paper sketches where I've been playing more with values, that's lights and darks, and simplification. I really think it's improved my art on so many levels, so I want to talk a lot more about that. So watch out for that video that's coming next. If you enjoyed this unboxing art haul video, then check out my previous one where we look at inks, pens and markers. I want to share with you my first art haul. It's from Jackson's.